Yo, what's up? Dr. Swole here, MD Bodybuilder, back with another video. Today I'm going to be giving you a full guide on how to lose fat. This video will teach the basics of everything you need to know on how to implement a fat loss phase, even if it's your first time doing it. Quick outline for today, we'll be talking about all the basic requisites for losing fat. We'll start off by talking about calories, how to figure out your calorie deficit and then how to create it. We'll talk about resistance training and cardio. We'll talk about macros and I'll explain how much you need of each macro and how to set them up step by step. We'll briefly touch on meal timing. And lastly, we'll talk a little bit about how to run the diet over time. If you've been enjoying my content, make sure you smash that like button, hit subscribe, and let's get into it. All right, let's start off by talking about calories. Now, weight loss is all about calories in versus calories out. And the first step is going to be figuring out your maintenance calories. The easiest way to do this is to record everything you eat in a food diary and your scale weight each day over a period of one to two weeks. You can look at your food diary and convert everything you've been eating into calories by looking things up on Google or using a calorie counting app. Then you can look at the trend in your scale weight over those one to two weeks and correlate to how many calories you've been eating to figure out your actual maintenance calories. So let's say you were eating 3000 calories per day over two weeks and your weight stayed stable. In that case, your true maintenance calories really is 3000 calories. However, let's say you were gaining one pound a week over those two weeks. In that case, one pound over each week is 3,500 calories of surplus, which means your actual maintenance calories would have been 3,500 calories less over the week. So if you divide that over seven days, that's 500 calories of surplus per day. And that means your actual maintenance calories was 3000 minus 500. So 2,500 calories per day. You can basically use this 3,500 calorie rule, whether you're gaining or losing weight over that period. After we figure out our maintenance calories, we're going to want to subtract calories to create a calorie deficit. Now, the easiest way to do this, in my opinion, is to aim for a rate of scale weight loss. And I would recommend that you aim for 0.5 to 1% of your body weight lost per week. So if you weigh 200 pounds, I would recommend losing weight at about one to two pounds per week. Now you mainly don't wanna be losing weight too quickly because you don't wanna jeopardize your gym training and possibly risk losing muscle. However, the caveat here is that if you are obese, you can lose up to 2% of your body weight per week and still maintain or even continue to build muscle. Okay, let's quickly run through an example. So for our 200 pound person, let's say their maintenance calories are 3000 calories. If they wanna lose weight at a rate of 1% per week, 200 pounds times 1% is two pounds of loss per week. And if you convert that using the 3,500 calories per pound rule, that's 7,000 calories of weekly deficit. And if you convert 7,000 calories of deficit across the whole week and divide that by seven days, you'll need a 1,000 calorie daily deficit. Once you have that daily deficit, you subtract from your maintenance calories. So 3,000 minus 1,000 calories of daily deficit means that you should be shooting for 2,000 calories per day. Let's quickly touch on resistance training and cardio. Resistance training is very important in my opinion for fat loss because it helps you to maintain the muscle you have and it can help you build new muscle. If you run a large calorie deficit without resistance training, you run the risk of losing muscle and not fat. So I'd recommend incorporating at least two gym workouts per week. I have a lot of videos on training, including my basics of training series. So check that out if you need pointers on how to set up a program. Now in terms of cardio, weight loss, as I said, is about calories in versus calories out. You can create the deficit by reducing the calories that are coming in through diet, or you can also create a deficit through calories out with cardio. However, I would recommend focusing on using diet rather than cardio for weight loss. This is because diet is usually more reliable and adding in more cardio often doesn't create a linear increase in weight loss. I talk more about how to implement cardio and what type to use in my cardio videos, so you can check those out for more. Now that we figured out our calories, let's go into macros. We'll set our protein, carbs, and fats in a systematic way. Starting off, the first thing you need to do is set your protein targets. You should be aiming for a minimum of 0.72 to 1.0 grams of protein per pound of body weight per day, which is 1.6 to 2.2 grams of protein per kilo of body weight per day. This is important to make sure that you maintain or continue to build muscle and protein is also very satiating, so it will help you to feel full. The next step is to minimize fat intake. Some people do find that they feel more satisfied having more fat in their diet. I would suggest not going below 0.5 grams per kilo of body weight per day as a minimum. This is because you need some fat intake to maintain your body's hormonal functions. And in terms of sugar, I would suggest eliminating it completely from your diet if possible. Sugary foods are very calorie dense and they don't keep you very full. 
so they're just not a good thing to have around. It's fairly simple to minimize fat intake by choosing lower fat options. In terms of protein sources, you'll want to choose low fat sources like lean cuts of meat or low fat dairy, and you'll want to choose low fat options for things like sauces and dips. Now, if you've kept everything else in your diet the same, if you achieve step two, you probably already will be in a calorie deficit. So see what you can get away with but the last step will be to systematically drop carbs. The easiest way to do this in my experience is to take your carb sources and replace them with plain vegetables. And by plain vegetables, I just mean no added carbs or fats. For example, boiled, steamed, or raw vegetables. So to summarize macros, I actually have a very simple approach. You set your protein intake and that stays constant throughout. Then you set your fats at a minimum and that stays constant throughout. And then to create your calorie deficit, you just systematically drop carbs. I like to drop fats before carbs because carbs tend to be very helpful for training. And it's important that you keep up your gym performance to continue to build or maintain muscle. Once we've set our macros, let's touch on meal timing. I currently recommend going for four to six meals per day with equal amounts of protein in each meal. In terms of the research we have right now, four meals per day is probably the minimum you wanna be aiming for for optimal muscle growth. And more than six meals per day tends to be cumbersome in my opinion, but you can go over that if it helps you reach your calorie targets. Now, as your carbs come down later in the diet, you're gonna to wanna to bias your carbs towards your pre and post workout meals. This will help you to optimize your gym performance. Lastly, let's talk about running the diet over time. Once you set your protein and minimize fats, you're gonna systematically cut carbs when weight loss stalls. There are lots of ways you can do this and you can use MyFitnessPal as well. But for example, if you take away 200 grams of cooked rice from your carb portion at dinner, that's 56 grams of carbs. And if you replace it with 100 grams of raw vegetables, which is around six or seven grams of carbs, you're basically subtracting 50 grams of carbs from your day. If you run that for a few weeks and continue to lose weight and then eventually stall again, then you might subtract another 50 grams of carbs from your dinner portion or say subtract it from your lunch portion. When you're adjusting your macros like this, I would recommend that you don't drop your macros two weeks in a row. You should be weighing yourself daily and calculating weekly averages to see how you're doing. But even then, sometimes it takes a couple of weeks for a change to come into effect. And you don't wanna drop your macros too quickly too soon. You can continue dieting like this until you reach your goal in terms of body composition or until you reach negative side effects. And by that, I mean really low gym performance, poor mood, and low sex drive. If you're running a fat loss phase just to keep your body fat in check as a bodybuilder, I recommend using fat loss phases that run from two to eight weeks. However, if you have a lot of weight to lose and you're having good progress, then by all means continue. That's all for now, guys. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like the video and leave me a comment below. In particular, what are your weight loss goals? Let me know. This was a really quick whirlwind overview of fat loss, but if you want to learn more, check out my other videos on fat loss where I really go through in detail how to structure a fat loss phase and how to make things more sustainable. If you've been getting value from my channel, make sure you subscribe and share the channel with your fitness friends so they can benefit from it too. See you next time.